Hello and welcome to Paramecia, a One Piece fancast where we review the latest chapter of One Piece and have a different One Piece related discussion every single week. My name is John. My name is Franz. And this week, One Piece is on break. So, due to the immense mind fucking that happened last week, we're going to talk about Boku no Hero Academia this week. <laughs> yeah, like, be- before we get into it, I want to ask, have have you recovered? Have you come to terms with what happened last week? No, and I, I still, like, there's so many... <laughs> I'm still mind-fucked. There's so many, like, there's so many ways that this could, like, play out. So many theories I've read that, like, I... At the, at, the, at the exact same time that there's so many ways this could play out, I also don't see any way this could play out. <laughs> yeah, I've just given up at this point. Like, One Piece is over. Cool. Yeah, Great. yeah, yeah. One Piece is, is over. <laughs> had a good run, team. Last week was the, what is it, like, the the, the seven stages of grief? <laughs> That's exactly what it is. We went through, like, the seven or five stages of grief last week's episode. This week's episode, we're gonna push that to the side and repress her feelings and emotions like any normal adult does. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to talk about Boku no Hero Academia. Um I, you and I have both started reading this manga like pretty recently. I want to say we got into it about the same time. I think you got into it before I did. It it was we both got into it before the anime came out. So a little yeah. early in its life cycle, and right when it was like picking up amongst the other like um, Shonen Jump manga. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It was sometime before that the what's it called Neverland thing came out. Yeah, the promise. Ne- okay, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes, it was yes. before that, so we've been reading this for like a couple years now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because I remember getting into it. I mean, we'll talk about it later in, like, a, I guess a spoiler section, but I, I remember getting into it during what's going to happen this anime season. <laughs> right, yeah. So, like, the end of whatever, the end of this anime season is, like, what I remember getting into it, reading it, like, week to week. Okay, I I got into it at the, around the end of the last anime season. Ra- okay, around, yeah. Around the end of that arc, I think, is when I got into it. Yeah. I mean, God, this show is just, like... It, it, it's it's a fairly young show. I, I guess we should start off with, like, a little history about it, I guess, before going into, like, the synopsis or whatever. Or a brief synopsis. Like, a brief Shonen Jump history of this, this manga. Um, So, uh, like, before this manga, like, for a while in, like, the early... like early to late 2000s there was a thing called the big three in shonen jump was, <laughs> yeah 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 you know you know it was naruto uh one piece and bleach and those were like like during that time shonen jump was a like an actual powerhouse in shonen manga like th- those three got ratings beyond anything i've ever seen like they were immensely popular and as time started to go on and, and and the years kept passing by, I mean, One Piece was the constant, right? It was, like, One Piece, I don't think, ever dipped in popularity. It was always no, up no. there. Like, uh, a lot of American people don't realize this because, like, One Piece got the shit end of the stick with four kids when it came to localization. Yeah, yeah. But outside of the U.S., One Piece is so strong in manga sales that literally every other mangaka, if they reach number two, that's it. They know they're... That's their number one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Everyone's competing for number two, very literally, and they are okay with that. Yeah, it's it's wild. Yeah, so th- as the years went on, the big three, you know, they started to get later in their lifespans, and they sort of started to, like depreciate i guess is the best word one piece was an was a constant it always you know week after week was giving people like what they enjoyed we're not naruto kind of dipped uh yeah <laughs> naruto kind of dipped um it came back and it had a strong ending when they finally announced it was ending i think that's when people really like really started like rallying behind it again and Mm-hmm. The sort of like nostalgia, like oh man, like it's gonna end. I've been with it for like you know I don't know how many years, 
so Naruto always was pretty strong. And I mean, in the West, it was like immensely popular. And Bleach had the the biggest fall of like, the, the biggest fall from grace that I've ever seen. And it was a sad thing to behold. But um, <laughs> when Bleach was ending, Bleach was like kind of forcefully pushed out of Shonen Jump. I mean, um, Shonen Jump reached a point where they they were pushing out a lot of series. Even I can't remember the name. It's the it's the goofy like gag manga with the cop who has like an M for his eyebrows. I can't remember the name of it. Oh, anyways, yeah, yeah, yeah. It it that one was going on for like a long fucking time. That was going on for like forty years or something like that. And then they like Shonen Jump ended its run because they were like, well, like we're gonna end it. It's been a good run, but we need to push out like new series to get people like like they, they really they had this push very recently in the past couple of years for like brand new series to get people like invigorated again into into shonen jump it, at, at that time they were really really losing their target audience like yes a lot of kids weren't really like picking this shit up and if they were it was only for one piece there's a whole culture of just going and buying the fat stack of fucking shonen jump just to read one piece and yeah <laughs> it's changing it's changing now yeah yeah the, the the landscape is definitely changing and shonen jump i mean i mean they got at the end of the day they got to do what they got to do right uh it sucks if you're a fan of those series but yeah this was the point right when they were pushing bleach out that they were really pushing for other shows and or show um fuck shows mangas and one of those mangas was or so, some of the new standouts were Haikyuu started oh, like man. at the beginning. It, it was it's a little older than Boku, but it was like it started at the beginning of that push. Uh, it really was, yeah. Yeah, The Promise Neverland came out like after Boku no Hero and then Boku no Hero obviously. Yeah. But man, like I remember when Boku no Hero like started and it was pretty early. People were liking it, and then I remember seeing like a uh, fan like popularity like rankings of the series from Shonen Jump. And dude, it was literally like week after week, month after month. Like Boku no Hero was was like they kept rising, and then I think they had a steady top three placing within Shonen Jump manga. And it's it's I mean that that was like crazy to me. That like wow, like this thing coming off the heels of like Naruto and Bleach, like this thing is able to get this you know level of popularity. And I mean it well deserved. <laughs> it, it really is, and. We'll get into a lot of the reasons as to why it really deserves all that popularity. Because, I mean, I can't really speak for, like, The Promised Neverland. IQ is absolutely, like, sick and amazing, but it's, like, kind of, like, pigeonholed within, like, a subgenre of shonen as, like, being the sports manga and everything. Yeah, yeah. Even though, like, honestly, like, if you don't like sports manga, IQ is still really, really good. But... Man, so yeah, let, let's get into uh, what Boku no Hero is. Let's get into what yeah. Boku no Hero is. Yeah, so Boku no Hero centers around the main character, um, Izuku Midoriya. Um, one thing I'll say right now is that every character has like three names. <laughs> because, oh, God. Like, okay, just just real quick. Izuku is his name. A lot of characters call him Midoriya because, you know, like the Japanese nomenclature, like you call someone by their last name. All that good so shit. So he is that. He has his nickname and also his hero name, Deku. And like Izuku, Izuku Midoriya, Midoriya, and Deku are all individual names, like all five of those that characters have called him in the past. Like some characters use his whole name, some characters use Deku, some characters use just Midoriya. Like it gets kind of wild. A little bit, but it's... When you're just getting into it, I should say, it gets kind of wild. Once you get to learn everybody's, like, names, it gets easy, but anyways. So, yeah. Off point. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the story centers around him, yeah. Yeah. And it all takes place in this whole setting of everyone's got these, like, mutagenic superpowers that, like, vary from, like... Like, oh, I can keep things warm for, like, X, Y reason to, like, fucking, I'm a I god. I have a stand and... that comes out of my stomach. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, 
it, it really has a huge variety of things and you see how it like society really like revolves around this and it gives this whole concept of like hero society and like they're all kind of competing for like popularity and everything the first few scenes in like the first chapters showcases a bunch of like uh pro like, heroes yeah a bunch of pro heroes that they're like you know coming out of the woodworks and they're just like yeah like all this shit but it really starts to evolve when oh wait missed a huge point so deku is in, in this society he has no power and you really see how this society like really like pushes against him in a lot of ways and he always dreamed of being a hero, like his big hero, All Might, who is literally some kind of, like, Stan Lee, Jack Kirby creation. Yeah, he is, yeah, he is, like, Stan Lee and Jack Kirby's, like, Japanese Jojo Stan. <laughs> I love he it. Is, All Might is the best. Yeah, this, this, I, I, I'll bring up real quick, the, the thing that makes the setting interesting is it's kind of... I find it really similar to One Punch Man in that heroes are not only normal, but they're government regulated in society. Oh, yeah. So, uh, I mean, unlike One Punch Man, like One Punch Man has like their, the heroes are basically like government officials. Yeah. Like they have a government salary and they work for the government. Um, This one they kind of do, but it's more um, like... Everybody has a quirk, so then government regulation says that, okay, like, in order to use your quirk in as, like, a hero, quote-unquote, you need to get, like, a hero license, and you need to get, like, registered. It's it's basically, like, what Iron Man fought for in the Civil War, but, like, if that worked out in the best possible way. Yeah. <laughs> if anybody understands what I'm saying. <laughs> like, so, it, it that's where it takes place, and eventually he does... He inherits the power from All Might and everything. He gets into this, like, very prestigious, like, hero high school that, like, sets them all up to be, like, pro heroes or support pro heroes in their work and stuff like that. And you you see him grow as a hero, grow to learn how to use his power and grow with his friends and everything. It's all, like, really really sweet and lovely except when it gets like extremely serious and then it's an emotional roller yeah. coaster but yeah the, the the long and short of it is that it's basically that old movie sky high thank <laughs> 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 you so much all <laughs> might's his so dad fucking right all might's his dad that's it and it's sky high oh my god <clears throat> Yeah, no, it's it's the, the whole yeah, that's the whole premise in a nutshell. It's really like the whole series is just following Deku and getting to see his progression and like the other characters' progression in this sort of like seeing their progression and how they deal with this hero like centric world. And it's just it it's way more interesting than I thought it would be initially. And I say initially like when you read the first chapter like it's cool and it seems like it's just going to be another like shonen manga like oh it's just going to be this hype like shonen battle manga and oh he gets this quirk it's going to be cool but there's a lot of stuff that gets explored by Horiko uh Horikoshi the author that's just super fucking cool like i i i it, it's way deeper than i thought it would get and i love it yeah so that's the skinny of it. It's like 178 chapters right now, but we'll we'll get into like uh a little bit more. Um let's move on to why we like Boku no Hero w without like revealing too much about the story. Yeah, um I will say later on there's some stuff that I do want to talk about that I will give a spoiler warning for. But at least for right now, I think we're pretty we'll play it safe. But yeah, I mean, why why we like the series so much. I it's I mean it's just good, man. I can read you off the bullet points and we can kind of go from there. It has a lot of character development as opposed to 
it's it's a good read for character development when every week I'm also reading One Piece, right? We're also reading One Piece, and One Piece is really big on world building. Like world building is the main allure of One Piece, and I would say the ex- like. There's still world building in Boku no Hero, but the exact opposite is why I love Boku no Hero is that the, the character development and the, the character writing is so, so powerful. I, oh man. <laughs> yeah, like we, we definitely can't say that there is no world building in Boku no Hero. That is an absolute lie because within the whole concept of hero society, there's a lot of things that you see with like the duality of man and what does con- what constitutes like good and evil and stuff like that but like yeah yeah b- beyond that it- it's not like it- it's not like with one piece where john and i both have rooms covered with like newspaper clippings and like red string everywhere and we're trying to <laughs> we're follow <Charlie>. oda <laughs> where's peppy sylvia peppy sylvia does not exist and there it goes is to no Carol, Pepe Carol. sylvia <laughs> <laughs> oh man so when when it comes to boku no hero what really attracts us is the depth of characters how much they change i mean i say let's just get into it with bakugo because that's yeah. the perfect example yeah he really is so i'm gonna channel my girlfriend right now who is passed out like a few hours ago i'm gonna call through the void and summon her into my mind's eye yeah (laughs) so like the whole thing with bakugo is that at the beginning and this this might be spoilers right now at the beginning there it starts with them in middle school like preparing to go to high school and like about to like take high school entrance exams so they're like 14 15 something like that around there yeah and Bakugo's a huge shithead. Like, he's bullying Deku a lot. A lot of localization and translations, like, really, like, paint him too strong. Because, like, the way he speaks, you can translate it a bunch of different ways. And everyone's, like, hard subbing him for, like, no fucking reason. (laughs) <laughs> like just just let my boy say fuck dude come on exactly like he just needs to say fuck not fuck you you fucking bitch ass fuck motherfucker <laughs> yeah murder death grenade <laughs> like there's a spectrum y'all so yeah oh, man. that's where he starts out but across these like 178 chapters you really see him reflect not so much on like what he did but like who he is and like why he does what he does why he feels the way he does and he opens up as a character to the reader and to other characters and it's it's nice yeah i i just delve into it real quick um like he's painted as an asshole when we first meet him and then I guess semi-spoilers for, like, the first, you know, big, like, manga arc or whatever. Or, like, the first season of the anime. When Deku gets into UA, there's a test that they have to do. And it's, they're, they're put up into teams of two. And each, char- and each character is, like, each team is, one team is a team of villains. And one team is a team of heroes. And there's a bomb in, like, this building. And the hero's goal is to get to the bomb before the hero, before the villains can, like, stop you or set or set it off and you know in this test obviously bakugo and deku are put up against each other and i i think that that's where we get the bulk of the his like flashback we we find out that when he was younger when they were in like preschool i think or kindergarten that's when his quirk like he was in the age where people's quirk starts like awakening in themselves and Bakugo finds out his quirk and it's like explosion. Basically his hands can like sweat nitroglycerin and he can ignite it and just cause like explosions. And like when he's in, so he's like, you know, the kid that everybody kind of looked up to in the class already. And then when he gets this quirk, a lot of the teachers are like, Oh, like such a, such a strong quirk. Like that's so good. And just as a little kid, he kind of gets that like in his head, you know, he kind of lets it get to his ego and he just, he, truly honestly believes until like 
until a specific point in the manga. Like, he truly believes that he is, like, God's gift to Earth. Like, he is the best hero. Like, he's the strongest and he's destined to be, like, the best. And it, that sort of idea really fuels his character throughout the beginning of the series. Because in the beginning of the series, he's just brash he just yells fuck yeah he he's just, an asshole he thinks like, he's the best yeah he's an asshole let, and let, let's like, be out at there the start like, of the series as much as we like this yeah, character yeah. at the very beginning he's just a fucking dick like yeah he's a piece of shit in the beginning but at the same time like a lot of this is also very like um it's very telling about japanese society in a lot of different ways in that a lot of these characters yeah. acts act as tropes for like how Japanese children are and like a lot of times it's like subtle a lot of times it's really on the nose there was like a very short arc it was like three chapters or something very recently where it involved like kindergarten or elementary school kids <laughs> yeah and yeah. it it they all like had their like own little tropes and everything and they were all kind of like vile like quote-unquote shitty kids but like you know they're kids they're raised by society they're raised by adults they they didn't do this they're not in the wrong and yeah that's kind of what the whole series really gets at like yeah i i I gotta say i really like there's a point in that uh, i mean as we said before bakugo goes through like this kind of character like he's still an asshole like he still kind of says stuff but now it's sort of like it's sort of played off as a gag now and a lot of the stuff he does is really like more thought out i guess like he understands now and there's a line in that most recent arc where he's talking bakugo immediately singles out the child in the class who was basically him yeah who was the the, like the ringleader who he calls it he's like oh if we get the bakugo's the one who tells everybody in the test like if we get if we turn the ringleader the entire class will turn we just have to target him like he fucking knew because that's what he was yeah yeah and there's a part i really like at the end um God, I can't find it. But at the end, they all, they're, they're, they reach a point in the test where they start turning all the kids around, like, to their side. The whole test is to, like, get the kids to, like, open up to them and stuff. And Bakugo just walks up and grabs the kid who's the ringleader's hand. And the ringleader kid's like, oh, like, what are you doing? Like, you know, who do you think you are? And then Bakugo tells him, like, you know, you really should stop looking at only yourself and look like look towards others and he's like because if you don't do that you'll never you'll never understand your own weakness and they the, he horikoshi draws bakugo in a like in a panel saying that and he has literally like the kind of like for the first time ever i think just calm face that he's ever had and even even the ringleader kid has a line afterwards like in his in a, in a thought bubble that's like those words he spoke just now they were like from the heart they weren't fake yeah, like, and it's just like it, it's so cool to see Baku go from go from like this asshole and like through all the tr- trouble and tribulations he's been through in the series, like all the characters, like he's he's learning and he's becoming a better person, and it's so cool to see. Yeah, that's a that's another thing. Like he's gone through so many things. He's gone through the most in this entire yeah. series, but that's like deep spoiler territory. Yeah, yeah, he goes through a lot of stuff. Um... Another character I want to, like, only touch on, because it is a touchy subject to a lot of people, and, like, so, Endeavor, he is used as a character that he is the definition of, like, what is wrong with hero society in a lot of different ways, in that he was, like, borderline okay with like eugenics and was like breeding yeah i I, I wouldn't even call it borderline like he so he there's a character in the class uh um oh my god i'm blanking on his first name uh shoto yeah shoto todoroki so todoroki is is a character who has when we first see him like in the class the first time you see him, all you know is he, he his hero name is like half and half or something dumb like that. No, and that he, that's it, that's what Bakugo calls him that. Or Bakugo calls him that, yeah, yeah. And we, we don't get to see his quirk until like the tournament arc, like the school tournament arc. But basically, 
he has fire on his right side and ice on his left side. And we find out that his father is the number two ranked <laughs> hero. So All Might is the number one hero, like, in the world. And Tod- Endeavor <laughs> is the number two hero. Todoroki is... Todoroki is Hor- Horikoshi's OC son of... Zuko and Katara from The Last Airbender. I hate you so much. I hate you so much. <laughs> tell me I'm wrong. So fucking right. <laughs> Bitch, tell me I'm wrong. Fuck. <laughs> oh my goodness. He inherited yeah, no, the scar? Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh my, no, 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 no. Oh my god. So I, I, I mean, okay, I'll, I'll just say spoilers because some of the stuff I do want to go into briefly. I won't give like a whole synopsis. Um, basically, you find out that Todoroki is Endeavor's son. Endeavor's the number two hero. And we get a... We get kind of a characterization from Todoroki about Endeavor. And all we get at first is that he hates Endeavor. He despises Endeavor. He wants to be... Todoroki wants to become a hero only using his ice powers. Because he hates his father's fire powers that he inherited. We find out later that Todoroki was the, like, product of an arranged marriage that Endeavor set up in order to create a child with the perfect quirk. Like, he used his status as hero to arrange a marriage for the sole purpose of producing, like, a child with... Like, he was producing the perfect quirk. He didn't care about the child. He just wanted the perfect quirk to surpass him. And it's just it's just real, like, bad. I mean, he's an abusive father on top of that, and, you know... He he is the direct result of everything bad that happened in Todoroki's life, including what happened to the mother. Yeah, and it's just a whole traumatic experience altogether for yeah. everyone involved but Endeavor. But yeah. at the same moment, like the, the, the same mini arc with the elementary school kids, he's like overlooking Todoroki and like kind of being a pompous asshole. But like he's talking to All Might. And as he's talking to All Might, he, like, he doesn't, like, break down or something, but he starts, like, opening. He opens up for the first time to All Might. And he starts, like, asking him, like, what does it mean to be a number one hero? And there was that moment and a short moment afterwards where he shows shows some sort of, like, pride in Todoroki that does not involve his quirk. That does not involve, like, physical power. And it it was, like, a fatherly moment. Something that we have been shown that he does not do, really. So, like, even then, while I still fucking hate Endeavor, and if he was a real person that I saw on the street, I'd probably rip his nose and ears off. Yeah. (laughs) It is... an asshole. It's character development. And it's really cool to see. Yeah, it's a thing where it's, like, everybody in the community agrees, like, like... Endeavor's an asshole. He's a sack like, of shit. Like, this this sort of, like, redemption, slow, slow, like, start to redemption we're seeing from him is, like, interesting. Like, everybody's just kind of on board, like, all right, let's see where this goes. Because, like, you know, it's it's really cool to see that, like, a character that was such an asshole can actually have that kind of change of heart. Um, even if it's only small right now. I think that's really cool. Yeah. Um. So. There's so many, like other <laughs> yeah there really are so many I, more examples yeah i mean the, the main the main thing is is you know characters versus world building there still is world building in boku no hero there, there's a villain that like recently appeared and like had his like his name like finally revealed but he's been shown in like a whole bunch of arcs prior and we just like we didn't know his name but we just saw him and then we finally got the reveal and it's like oh shit that was him the whole time like he was there but yeah, like it's, I I really like the character development in the all, every character. I what I like to call it is the, uh, <laughs> it's the meme. It's the green Naruto, right? Oh Pokemon yeah, here is a green Naruto, because really it's it's, I think it's a fair comparison to make that Boku no Hero is a lot like the first part of Naruto in terms of, like in Nar in the first part of Naruto there's the the Konoha twelve right the twelve kids in the class yeah and all the different teams and everything like yeah 
And and as the first part went on, we really got to see like a deep dive into how each team functioned. We got to see them fight. And then, you know, towards the end of part one, it kind of just became Sasuke and Naruto. And then Shippuden was just complete Sasuke and Naruto. Like nothing else mattered. And then they became God. Dude, um, slight aside, <laughs> they're canon gay. Who, Sasuke and Naruto? Yeah. But Naruto's married <laughs> to Hinata. Who's best wife? True, but still, you feel? I feel. You know, I feel. I feel. Sasuke loves Naruto more than he loves Sakura. Damn, you're right. You're right. Exactly. <laughs> no. Anyways, um, but yeah, it's it, it's Horikoshi does an excellent job of juggling all the characters in Class One A. Because the main characters of this series, I mean, the main character is Deku, obviously. But we follow all the characters in Class 1A, and there's a fuck ton. And it's like, we actually get characterization for all of them. And it's like, it's not just like, you know, he does, Horikoshi doesn't just cash in a check. Like, oh, this chapter is just about this character because I haven't written about him in a while. It's like, all of it's very organic and real and like... Each one has character development and intercharacter, like, interactions between each other that just feel so genuine, and we get a real, like, glimpse as to what these characters are like. He he puts care into each and every character, even the ones that yeah. you're not supposed to like, and I, I mean that, like, the villains as well as this dumb grape diaper boy... And you best believe when I come oh back god. and like edit this, I will censor his name. Oh my god, don't. <laughs> look, is a shitbag, but look, the fight he had with Miss Midnight and like the reveal he like the 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 like conclusion he came to about why he wants to be a hero, I thought was actually like really cute and genuine. Like I I I did really like that part. It was, what was he, it? He, he was, he was in the fight and he was thinking about, because remember Sarah, uh, they're fighting Miss Midnight and Sarah, the tape guy gets caught by Miss Midnight. Like she uses her quirk to put him to sleep and she's like, oh, like if you, if you both want to pass, like you're going to have to come back and get him, but then you're in my range of my quirk and I get you and then you lose. Um, or you can also lose by just running away. Like she puts him in like this insane checkmate. Like, before, before she captured Saro, Saro threw him with his tape, like, oh, b- like, you gotta go, you gotta, you know, pass. And so he's running to the finish line to, like, pass, and then he starts to, like, slow down, and he starts thinking of, like, Ochako and Deku and all the things they've done in Suyu, and he's like, oh, like, why did I want to be a hero? And he even starts thinking about, like, a lot of the shit he said, you know, and and how he acted in the first arc where he was, like, wanting to just run away from the villains like oh no we can't fight them like we just gotta run like who cares if they're in danger like our classmates can fend for themselves and he comes to this sort of he comes to this uh he comes to the conclusion that like the reason he wanted to be a hero was because he just wanted to be cool like he just wanted he was he he was just a shitbag he just wanted to be accepted but then he came to realize that like the reason Deku like he he says it the reason Deku and Ochako and Suyu are going to be the best heroes in the world isn't because they want to be cool it's because they already are cool and he uses cool in the sense of like the way they act and their morals like the morals they stand for is what makes them cool and then that's when he comes back with the tape over his mouth to save Ciro and he's like no like he's not breathing in her quirk and he's like no like I'm gonna be a hero just like them I'm gonna be I'm gonna prove that I can be just as cool I don't know I thought it was really good (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> he's still a diaper shit yeah he's still baby. a diaper shit great baby but he's my no, i understand i understand <laughs> that's because both of y'all are horny like oh my god no 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 i got you checkmate bastard i fucking love <laughs> dude he's funny as fuck <laughs> yeah no it's it's i mean getting back to it things like that like <laughs> characterization is something we never would have gotten in naruto towards the end and it's like it's it's cool that it's been going for this long and even though we're set up to know that like deku is gonna be like you know the final player and all this 
that like these other characters that are his classmates are still getting a lot of characterization. It's it's the green Naruto effect, dude. I love it. I, I really do. Yeah. Um, if I'm not mistaken, our next talking point involves, in a very specific way, a character design, right? Yeah, yeah. Are you talking about like? Wait, which point are you talking about? The 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 girls. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah, yeah. So yeah. All right, I'm back on board. Yeah, our next point is 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 female characters and how Horikoshi portrays female characters as opposed to like any other mangaka like other other than like maybe the girl who wrote Sailor Moon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, like her and so there's her and then there's the mangaka that did Inuyasha. Yes. Inuyasha was the gone. both of them are the other like two bastions but like as far as like as far as we know male as far as mangaka, a shonen jump series goes i guess yeah he's definitely something else because like one piece we talked about it in our episode like how to get into one piece how to get your friends into one piece we talked for several minutes about how oda's like character design for women is kind of really bad yeah, like, Oda's character design is very, like, dialed in, right? Uh, th- not to say that any of the female characters are bad characters. They are no. well-written, and they're wonderful characters, and I will protect Robin with my fucking life. Exactly. Robin Defense Squad 2018. Yeah, but yeah, Robin Defense Squad 2018. I will defend her until my very last breath c- c- have at ye. But it's, th- I mean, the design still, there's something you just can't overlook. Yeah, it's off-putting. It really is. Because, like, yeah. you know, it it doesn't really show much diversity, what real woman looks like that, etc. <laughs> yeah. And Horikoshi's the... Op- oh, let's also compare to Naruto, in that, um, like... Yeah. All the girls in Naruto just look the fucking Kinda same. They're, same they're, there was yeah, nothing. Yeah. Like, the only exception, I guess, would be choji's daughter yeah yeah (laughs) but like even then like she's treated like a fucking gag character the entire time so like all the female characters are pretty dialed in in naruto and one piece uh design wise in one piece just overall other than a few exceptions in naruto but our guy our main man horikoshi is god amongst men (laughs) <laughs> god amongst human beings when it comes to creating female character designs and characters like i mean just character designs alone i've never seen like this vast of like differences you know and char- like each female character is like they have their own little like physical quirks about them that make them like just different i don't know like okay like obvious okay yeah momo has big tits oh yeah okay it's dialed in but momo is also a character that like we've seen there there's there's been multiple shots of them with like you know there's one time where they all dress up as like cheerleaders and you can see all of their like midriff and you could like momo kind of has like like she has like a little bit of a of a of a belly like it's not super like she doesn't look fucking prego but she has like some fat there like i'm not gonna beat around the bush like she has some fat there but then it's like when he designs her like that you see that in her design all the time but then it makes sense because the way her quirk works is that she has to eat a lot of foods and build up a lot of fat because she can create any item that she's seen before like as long as she knows how any sort of item works so like let's say let's say she wants to make a monkey wrench if she knows how a monkey wrench works she can pull it out of her body like she can create it from the fat in her body so that's like that leads you to knowing her character and you know her character is top of the class her character is number one in the entire class She's the smartest girl character because she has to know how all of these things work in order to create them. And then she's still, like, you know... I would say, like, flat out, she's the smartest character, period. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) She is, like, she's crazy, dude. Like, she's such a good character. And it's like, when you see something like that in her design, that's like, oh, that's different, but also makes sense. Like, it's not, he's not, like, 
he's not just giving her a little bit of like fat on her body because oh i'm gonna be different and i'm gonna draw this character with a little bit of fat it's like no like he's drawing this character this way because it makes sense within the context of her quirk and the story and it's oh it's so cool (laughs) there there's a lot of that and then there's a lot of different like there are different body types and like amongst all different characters and you know they're not all just like stuck within like boxes like she has kind of like a like a humpback and everything and she's she's like a frog like she's always hunched over and she has her arms up and she's always like her tongue is out she's she's just sort of awkward looking like she has this little awkward like frog stance but fuck you if she isn't the cutest fucking character froppy defense squad 2018 have at ye and like they're there's just so much where it's like Ochiko's like chubby too and then there's yeah. Jiro who's like on the skinnier side and everything and like um recently they're in the arc they're doing now like a lot of the girl characters are like dressing up in this like skimpier dresses but if you like really notice how like the shading and coloring is they're like wearing like body like full body tights and everything, they're not, like, really showing anything. Yeah. Like, there's still, like, the midriff area, and they're still wearing, like, skirts. But it yeah, seems yeah. to be that they're, like, concealing themselves, because they're, they're still high schoolers, and it's a high school event, like... Yeah. They, they, he has a lot of, like, diverse female, like, car- body types that I think is really cool. And, I mean, I think it's really awesome that we're seeing that in... Boku no Hero and I think I mean you know I'm not going to be ignorant and say that's the only reason because obviously not but I think it's definitely part of the reason that like whenever they do like character or whenever they do like reader polls and Shonen Jump there is a bigger female fan base comparative to other series in Boku no Hero like it's still predominantly like young Japanese like boys but there is, like, a significantly, like, you can obviously see, like, a lot more girls going to Boku no Hero. And I think that's really probably, I mean, you know, they get this kind of representation in a genuine way that isn't just, like, shitty. Oh, I'm just going to do this to get more, like, I don't know. I mean, I have, like, personal experience in that I work with middle schoolers here in Japan. And, like, very loose numbers or something. Let's say, like half the class reads manga and that half the class what they're reading is if they're in the sports haikyuu if they're not in the sports boku no hero that is literally nice. it like yeah. and it's completely regardless of gender the kids that don't read manga don't read manga cuz they either don't have the time of day for it or that's because they're, like, the super jockey kind of kids that, like, they pour all of their time into, like, playing sports. That's it. Yeah, I I, I just, I, I think it's really cool that, like, Boku no Hero has that kind of, like... Pull. Pull, yeah. That's the best way to put it. And even just in, like, c- character motivations when it comes to the female characters, like... Again, a lot Ochoco of writers will sort is of... the realest fucking character. Yeah, a lot of fucking writers will make like female characters want to be strong for like really i mean stupid and arbitrary reason reasons in a lot of media like you, there's so many examples of badly written female characters that like you could every naruto female character <laughs> yeah yeah every naruto female character yeah basically but like yeah ochigo ochigo is the best fucking ochigo defense squad 2018 have at ye like i god she's so fucking precious and i love her and i want to protect her she wants to be a hero because i fucking spoilers but who gives a shit she wants to be a hero because you find out that so in, in the start of the tournament arc she's really fired up about the tournament she's really fucking go get them attitude and she's like yeah we're we all gotta do our best and we're gonna rock the tournament and everybody's kind of like like yeah cool but like it's weird like you'd never act like this before and then you find out when she tells deku and um oh my god ida uh ida yeah (laughs) i was like what's fast guys yeah fuck the fuck the first names we don't know shit yeah yeah she she tells izuku and ida that like she wants to be a hero for she 
prefaces it by, I want to be a hero, but it's not a reason that I'm very proud of. And they're like, what are you talking about? And she says, like, she grew, she grew up in a, in a poor family. And we get flashbacks to her as a child. And she's, like, living as, as she's the child of two parents. And she's, she has a quirk. And she, like, watches as her parents are, like, struggling to, like, you know, put food on the table. But her parents are struggling as hard as they can to make her life the best it can be. Because they just want the, what's best for her. And, like, as a little kid, she internalized that and she, like, she understood that. And she, she even as a little kid, she's like, no, I want to be a big hero so I can help you guys. And the parents are like, no, like, like, thank you, but you, you don't need to help us. Like, we want you to be the best for you. Like, you just worry about yourself. We'll handle the rest. You don't have to worry. And you find out that she wants to be a hero because she wants to help her parents. Like, she just wants to get a pro hero license so she can support her parents and give them the vacation that they never had because they used everything for her. And I, that, you know, that whole speech that she gives to Deku leads to like one of my favorite, if not my favorite fight from that tournament arc where she fights against Bakugo oh, and like dude. Every, every single person in the audience, like kind of is like, Oh, like Ochigo's going to lose like Ochigo. There's no way she could beat Bakugo. And not she puts up a fight against Bakugo that like Bakugo didn't even see coming. And at the end, Bakugo like barely makes it out because she uses her gravity quirk to like uh she makes all these rocks fall from the sky onto Bakugo. And I mean, okay, Bakugo blasts all of them away in one blast, and she kind of gets like she's like in one blast, like maybe I was in over my head. But we get a we get an internal line from Bakugo where his arm is like clenching up, like his muscles are like on fire, and he's like, "That was way too close." Like she almost had him, <laughs> and I just I I just think her character motivation is so good, and like it it made me cry when she called her parents after, and she's like crying like, "Oh, like her parents are so proud of seeing her on TV," and like, "Oh, you did so well," and she's like, "No, like I'm a failure. I couldn't do it." Like. Oh, man. But on top of that, her motivation has, like, changed yet again. Yeah. But the After the most recent big arc that, like, really affected the story, towards the end of that, she, like, she saw Deku and everything. And, like, th this is kind of, like, a, a sexist trope to a certain sense, but I, I still like how she changed because she saw this and she's like, I now see what being a hero can be and yeah. she wants to be more like that she has been like re-motivated and reinvigorated to yeah. help people she still wants to help her parents of course but she also wants to help people and it's kind of showing a shift between that and like the mentality some other heroes have showed where it's like i'm doing it for the fame and kind of shit like yeah like uh, Mount Lady, like in the first chapter, Mount Lady is only helping those people because she wants more like viewers on her videos and stuff. Yeah, like there, there's a bunch of shit like that. Yeah, I, man, real, real quick, I do uh, like the female characters great in Boku no Hero. I do want to get into the villains real quick because I think, that, like, even the villains are so interesting, and I feel like. He kind of writes specific villains in a way that, like, you want to root for them? Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, so the the way I put this earlier is that, like, when we were discussing before recording, Oda, the way he writes his villains, he sits down and he's like, okay, how do I make this the most detestable person you have ever seen or conceived in your fucking life? And we hate these people so much with like absolute disgust in all of ev like every fiber of our being we hate doflamingo crocodile is oh, kind of cool but we still hate lost. him <laughs> and we you know we hate all of these people because they're absolutely vile characters yeah but the motivations of the villains in boku no hero is very different in that they're still like fucking like wild and evil and everything they're still basically like a terrorist organization and how they operate but yeah. ever since and the, the has the anime gotten to it yet did it pass the stain arc 
Yeah, the anime already passed a stain arc. So, I mean, I get spoilers still. Spoilers still, it's, yeah. But it's available. You could watch it. Ever since then, it really starts, like, showing what the the whole dichotomy of, like, heroes and villains and, like, the idea of an ideal hero doesn't necessarily match up what is present in society right now. And a lot of villains are motivated. Yeah, the show really plays with the idea, I mean, at, during and after the Stain arc, it really plays with the idea of, is, like, are the heroes just simply because the government says they are? Mm-hmm. Or, or mm-hmm. like, is is this sort of hero society really what's best? Because in the Stain arc, when they go after Stain, after the kids fight Stain, they're in the hospital and the police chief comes by and he tells them, he says, you you... Like, basically, I can arrest you right now because what you did was against the rules. And then the kids kind of talk to him like, well, what the fuck did you want us to do? Like, well, not, you know, exactly. But they're like, did you want us to not go after Stain and let him kill more heroes? Like, we did what we had to do because we needed to protect people. And the police chief kind of has a line where he's like, oh, like, you guys are still young. Like, you don't get it. And it's just, it's it's a really interesting interaction between the two where it's like, like, they did what was right and they're getting like scolded for it and even even uh to get into stain he is a villain that we get introduced to pretty early and just design wise he is totally a 90s like he's a ninja turtle spawn ninja turtles villain like he is so cool design wise like i another real thing that i like about boku no hero is that horikoshi has such a diverse art style that he can draw stain like in his art style and it's still believable within the the world it's like oh yeah that's stain like he just he exists in this world as a spawn villain like he's he's just a ninja turtle guy he's cool like, exactly like, it, it's canon yeah but stain is a hero we get introduced to or a villain we get introduced to and he's called hero killer stain and his motivation is that he detests hero society because of heroes like endeavor basically he sees what the hero society has done. He sees the kind of people that have been created from hero society, like Mount Lady and Endeavor, like people that are selfish and only care about bettering themselves rather than bettering society. And Stain is a person who actually, like, it's revealed that he looks up to All Might, just like Deku. Like, there's a lot of characters in this show that look up to All Might, but they're, like, it's just the way they perceive All Might's message is different, and it's really cool. And stains one of them because he perceives all might's message as this is the apex of heroism like to be the best hero you like you basically have to be like all might like you have to stand for what's right no matter what and always help people no matter what like no matter what the problem is like you will step in and help people just like deku thinks stain sees the sort of perversion that hero society has taken on that stance and His answer to that is that he is going to hunt down heroes who don't abide by that rule. And if he deems you unworthy of being a hero, if you're any sort of selfish or have any selfish desires, he will kill you. And his whole goal is to weed out the the wrong heroes. And in, in his mind, in weeding out the wrong heroes, he will bring rise to the right kind of heroes to take him out. Like, he wants to kill these heroes to light the fire in the heroes who are like All Might, to rise up so they can eventually take him out. And once they take him out, like, his job, like, he succeeds. Like, he he betters hero society by killing the selfish ones. And I, I, it's just, when he, when you find out his plan, you just, it's just a moment where you're like, he, is he wrong? Like, yes, he's morally wrong, I guess, because he's killing people, but, like, he sees what the reader sees wrong with like he points out what's wrong with the hero society and the readers sort of kind of like put into the situation where it's like well maybe yeah like he i mean he makes sense like there's there's that example of this whole trope that they're going with and there's an even more recent example with gentle like yes a, a lot of a lot of these villains are sitting here with these their actions are inherently not that great but their morals where their morals lie and their moral compass it's not wrong it's kind of like 
the new Black Panther movie where everyone went and saw it and, like, you know, they're sitting there after the movie, like, Killmonger wasn't wrong. He just yeah. fucking <laughs> wasn't wrong. That's it. D- d- like, is it right to kill people? Arguably, no. But, I mean... Yeah, it comes down to a philosophical, like, is how do you perceive what's best for the greater good? Like if losses are necessary along the way, does that justify the end? And I, that, that's a, that's a question that like the stain thing sort of brings up that. I th- yeah. But gentle in this newest arc, I think is really, he's such an interesting character. Cause like he's a villain, right? Like he's, he doesn't abide by the standards of, of, you know, th- this hero society, but he, like his goal is, to make youtube videos <laughs> like yeah his goal like i think his first video was somebody wronged him from like some convenience store or something or the no, expiration what it was, was, date yeah the expiration date was was like wrong on something in the convenience store and the convenience store lied about it so in order to bring that like in order to get justice on them he like attacked the convenience store and like stole from them but in the end, like, he he dropped the case of money outside, and he was like, oh, I don't need it. Like, that wasn't the point. And, like, he just leaves. And it's like he beat everybody, he beat up all the heroes that were there trying to, like, stop him. But, like, he just, he wanted to prove a point that, like, no, like, this is, like, I, I don't know. It's it's a weird thing. It's like he was he was doing a good thing in, like, a bad way, I guess. Like, I don't, I don't know. Even... Even with his plan right now, his plan currently is he wants to make, like, this great spectacle, and he wants to break into UA, and his reason for doing so is he wants to, like, him breaking into UA will invigorate a stronger spirit within the students to stand up and, like, protect what's right. So it's another example of, like, well, I mean, like, what he's doing is bad, but the end result is not villainous. <laughs> Man, Book of No Hero is good. Yeah, yeah. If if you've gotten anything from our rambling, uh, 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 from our fanboy rambling, it's that this series is fucking good, and you should read it immediately. Read it or watch it. Yeah, though the anime is like really keeping good like track with it, and it doesn't suffer from like filler arcs because they're doing it like season by season instead of like completely yeah. ongoing. So it, it it's good. And even if you read it, I do suggest going and watching, like, fight scenes, because holy fuck. Holy shit, yeah. Some of the fight scenes are ridiculously well done. See, this is what happens when Toei... When your animation is not done by Toei animation, fucking (laughs) penny-pinching ass motherfuckers. Yeah, this is uh, what Studio Bones does, Boku no Hero, right? Is it Bones? Dude, no wonder. Yeah. Or... It's Bones. Fuck, hold on. Uh, it's Studio Bones or uh, Boku no. Yeah, I think it is Studio Bones. Huh. Yeah, it is Bones. Well, yeah. goddamn. Yeah, it's it's crazy that like it's, it's, Studio Bones is like an amazing anime studio, animation studio, and they do this show. They do this series justice in on all fronts. Like they're 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 doing it seasonal, so they have enough time to like. Ha- have a good budget to provide to the season and god do they not skimp out on their budget because th- there are so many scenes that are so well done in the anime that like this season alone there's one scene that you know what i'm talking about that's it, it's spoilers but all all i will say is united states of smash dude <laughs> if you're watching the anime and you see the moment with united states of smash I think everybody is going to nut at the exact same time. Like, Dude, simul nut. I will, f- like, the rush of endorphins hitting my brain for the first time in 20 years will, like, throw <laughs> me into another dimension. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, it's... So, yeah. This series is good. Boku no Hero is good. To... <laughs> Let's, in, in typical... Paramecia fan cast fashion. Let's end this with a good old crack theory. A Boku no Hero crack theory. Exactly. Uh, um, yeah. 
And I just thought of this. This is this isn't crack theory, but a good name for a fan cast for Boku no Hero would be like Plus Ultra or something like that. TM trademark registered trademark. Yeah, yeah. Copyright. Don't steal it, you assholes. If any of you steal it, I'll hunt you down. And Plus I'll Ultra fan cast you. right here. Yeah, yeah. Plus Ultra fan cast. So yeah, here we are, John and Franz from the Plus Ultra fan cast, and. Our our crack theory should be surrounding this whole, like, traitor theory. That there's this, like, theory that, like, one of the students is, like, part of the villain league. And, like, a traitor and giving them information and stuff like that. So, who's the traitor, John? Um... Where was the invisible girl in... The first arc. <laughs> she wasn't there. And then when she appears, she's like, where was everybody? And then they're like, where were you? And she's like, I was here the whole time, teehee. Bullshit. She was not there the whole time. I mean, I, the, she's the traitor. There are people that think that. There oh are many, she's many. the traitor. Toru's the traitor. Invisible girl Toru is the traitor. Confirmed. You know who yeah, we can't I saw... see her, so how can we trust her? Hold on. Let let me let me find this on Tumblr real quick. Cause I saw this really, really good like fan art from somebody specifically about the trader theory. Oh, okay. I thought you were gonna say of Toro. And no. I just imagined No no no, no. Like, there is a good PNG fan art with like no background like a, just a png a transparent of blank. PNG. yeah 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 transparent png <laughs> no, no there's really good fan art of toru to be honest like don't just because she's invisible doesn't mean that she doesn't have representation in this there are a couple of scenes like where you can see her lying down in a bed and you can see like the imprint of her body or like she's in the bath and you could see like the water displacement of where she is or and it's it's like i don't know it's it's funny it's fucking wild okay yeah here we are i I don't know how to pronounce this url okay no i'm i'm just dumb so this is by a tumblr artist called uh alina israfilova alina a-l-i-n-a their last name i-s-r-a-f-i-l-o-v-a you can find them on Tumblr, just all of that one word dot Tumblr. And it's like a quick sketch of like an Instagram post on a phone. And like all you see is the the username purple purple balls 69 with like the location tag secret training camp. And it's like the dumb purple um diaper baby like Next to Jiro getting, like, punched by Jiro and everything. It says, hashtag hot spring, hashtag naked, hashtag, uh, titty bar, I think. And then <laughs> the next picture yeah. is the villains just, like, eh. they're, they're just sitting there and it's like, he, he tagged their location. And then <laughs> the the only thing is, like... Another April Fool's traitor theory. Sorry for the quality. <laughs> it's so, hold on. Oh, he, he tagged the location. Yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> All right, Mineta's the villain. <laughs> yeah, Mineta's the villain. It's confirmed. I'm about it. Mineta's the villain. Confirm. Cool. Confirm. Cool. We can we can put that one in the bag. So we'll see y'all next week. With One Piece oh content. Um, we'll see you next week. If we live through the chapter next week. Yeah, we will see you next week with with the the end of our stay in One Piece limbo, where we don't understand anything. And we'll see you next week when we enter chapter 901. And we hopefully get answers to whatever the fuck we just read last week. Man... If, honestly, like, where I stand now, One Piece is over. I've, like, yeah. low-key, like, <laughs> I'm ready to epilogue. come to terms with it. And if oh so, God. 
Welcome to Plus Ultra, a Boku no Hero fan cast where we read and discuss every week's yeah. Boku no Hero chapter. My name is Franz. My name is John. And have a oh, good week. <laughs>